warm welcome to the viewers Certainly. of CCR TV uh, to this panel discussion where we are going to discuss the issues that have cropped up following a recent notification issued by the central government which said that it has begun the process of monetizing thousands of properties which belong to people who have migrated to two enemy countries, Pakistan and China. Many of these properties are also in Goa, as many as 295 immovable properties are enemy properties in the sense that they, their ownership is now vested in the custodian of enemy properties. Under a law that was enacted by the Indian Parliament in 1968, after the first Indo-Pakistan War. To discuss these issues in our studio on this panel, we have three very distinguished lawyers. Uh, I'll start with uh, Advocate Radharav Gracious, who is a former legislator and a commentator and a very senior lawyer. Uh, we also have on our panel Advocate Cleofoth, Cleofath Almeida Kutino, uh, another very senior lawyer who has been a teacher in law college, who has been an ex-judge as well, uh, and a political analyst often seen on TV screens these days. And of course, we have Advocate Carlos Alvarez Ferreira, MLA, and also a very senior lawyer. I will start with uh, Dr. Radharav. Uh, Dr. in your own opinion, what is your take on this latest development where the government of India has said that it has started monetizing in the sense it has started disposing the enemy properties? Uh, see, I think since the law is there enabling the government to monetize uh, enemy properties, they have the right to do it. But the question is, which are the enemy properties and how have they been identified? Now, you see, in this context, Goa is in a con completely different position. There are supposedly 290 or more properties identified as enemy properties. Now, Goa's situation is different. You see, <coughs> when at least as we look at it, the enemy countries currently are China and Pakistan. Pakistan. Now, Pakistan and India, the republics of India and Pakistan came into being in 1947. Now, at, in 1947 and till 1961, Goa was part of Portuguese. Was continued to be Portuguese mm -hmm. territory. But there were Goans who had settled all over British India. There were Goans in uh, Bombay, there were Goans in Karachi, Calcutta, even in Rangoon. And besides, there were Goans settled in British East Africa. There were Goans in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, all over. So they continued to hold Portuguese passports till 1961 because they had no, they could not, uh, see, they were not affected by partition because Goa was not part of India mm -hmm. or Pakistan. So they continued to live there, work there. Even Goans continued to work in Bombay uh, with Portuguese passport. People used to travel from Goa to Bombay or Belgaum with some uh, something Bili. called document para viaje, some issued by the government. Mm -hmm. So Goans, even in India, were Portuguese nationals, yes, yes. traveling to Goa on Portuguese nationality. Now, essentially, if you look at the Enemy Property Act or the Evacue Property Act, what they define as evacue property is, or enemy property is, property left behind by those who have left the country on account of the liberation, yes, who, have, who have left Goa on account of liberation. If you have gone on account of. Mm. Now, these are people who are already there. There was no question of going on account of. Yeah. They were already there. So it was incumbent on the government of India to take this into account that Goans have a different, uh, are there on different counts mm. and accordingly make provisions in the law to exclude Goans from the purview of this enemy property act. See, we, Goans are not enemies of anyone. 
and mm. many of them are not Pakistani citizens. You see, they may have had Portuguese passports, they may have been residents in Pakistan, but they have mostly migrated to other countries on Portuguese passport. Mm. So I think in this case, this issue has to be taken up, whether Goans will become enemy property, go enemy citizens, or enemy Goan land will become enemy properties. Mm. So this critical issue has to be determined. And I think our MPs and whoever they are must take up the issue in Parliament to show that Goa is on a different footing altogether. That Goans have not left the country because we have any allegiance to, to Pakistan, Pakistan or China for that matter. China in that context would probably be in Macau now. Uh, a very uh, interesting point raised by uh, Advocate Radharav Gracious in the context of the uh, enemy properties in Goa because for that period of uh, 14 years, you know, Goa was not part of uh, independent India between 1947 and 61 and many Goans continued to to be uh, residing and working in Pakistan in, in, in those years. So this aspect needs to be raised at, at uh, the central level by our members of parliament and probably get some kind of a concession for uh, Goans owning pro uh, enemy property in Goa. Uh, I would now request uh, Advocate Cleofat to uh, place before the viewers his point of view on this particular uh, notification of the government. See, uh, looking at uh, the law does not look like uh, such a concession is possible unless it is made out. An exception is carved out. See, because uh, uh, even if you are uh, even if you are currently not a citizen of Pakistan like the Raja of Mahmud, he went to London uh, after taking Portuguese citizenship. But still, he was held within the sweep of the law. Uh, but one more thing, what we have to take into account is that the danger is real now. Because uh, this problem has started in the year 2020, in January 2020, when the group of ministers headed by Amit Shah was constituted mm -hmm. to sell the properties. And uh, possibly because of COVID, mm -hmm. it did not go any further. Mm -hmm. But they sold something like 11,500 shares, 11,500 crore shares. Immovable Immo property. property. 11,500 crore shares. Jewels, Jewel. gold mm -hmm. has been sold. Gold. Lot of Vipro shareholders uh, who are uh, Pakistani nationals mm -hmm. uh, lost their lost their holdings, holdings in on that count. So, but the problem right now is the government of India has realized that the amount of immobile property is one lakh crores. crores. So that one lakh crores is a big figure which the government wants to monetize. Uh, one aspect I would like uh, Dr. Cleofat to, uh, to delve in is uh, does it violate an individual's private right, uh, this particular law? And can it be challenged on that ground? See, I, I, uh, to my mind, this issue came up. Number of times it has come up. And the courts have at least said that uh, citizens' right is not violated. Uh, they have very clearly said Article 14 is not violated. 300A is not violated, right to property, because uh, of a classification made that they are not, uh, they, are, they are enemy any enemies of the country. Could it but be but see, what has happened is, uh, from 1968, uh, up to 2005, uh, the person who went out and who owned the property was considered as an enemy. enemy. Uh, in the case of Raja of Mahmud, that uh, from Uttar Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, his family who were 
local politic politician in India, his son, his wife, fought a 30 year long battle and succeeded. Mm. Where they held that uh, the successor would not be uh, affected. By affected. The, by the but law. now the 2017 amendment has undone that, undone position. that position. Yes, yes one. True. They now say that a legal heirs by law is enemy, enemy also. Mm. They say that Indian Succession Act will not apply. Not apply. Exactly. Will not apply. The transactions, if they have taken place in respect of enemy property from 1968, mm. are also void retrospectively. So it is quite a sweeping change in the law that has come about. There is another uh, loophole that comes up, but uh, I will bring it up after uh, I give the floor to Carlo, uh, to Carlos Alvarez. Uh, the question of undivided property, property oh, yeah. that was legally held by me living here in India and also by somebody who is in the in, in, uh, a co-owner kind of a situation, you know, where the one co-owner is a legal resident of India, a citizen of India and the other co-owner is an enemy. What happens to that property? So we'll, we'll discuss this in the discussion later, but now I will uh, uh, give the floor to uh, advocate Carlos Salvarez to put before the viewers his, his viewpoint on this whole. Uh, See, uh, I have been uh, the lawyer for the custodian of enemy property and I've handled some matters. But when I was looking at it in perspective uh, of your debate particularly, mm -hmm. let me be honest, I began thinking on how I could make certain suggestions, how we can save the property from being attached, even if it's attached, to get them deattached, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, save them from being taken over by the custodian. First thing I always maintain that whatever law is there to deprive you of your property must be a fair law. If there is a fair law, the minimum thing is you should be given notice before your property is declared as enemy property. Forget the definition of who's an enemy and what is an enemy property. But minimum thing is you should be given notice. Natural justice. Natural justice. And there are catena of judgments Correct. of our High Court which has set aside these orders of the, of the custodian and said custodian can take steps. That is the second part of it. But I'm on this fu fundamental principle that behind your back, custodian has made some discreet inquiries with the Mamlada, mm -hmm. some local inquiries. Somebody says, to Gelo. nobody knows who in Gelo, Pakistan and Gelo. So finally put your, the name of custodian there. Mm -hmm. And you have to fight the reverse battle, which according to me is wrong. So that is one of the fundamental things which will always run on this part of it. But I have something greater and graver and I think my colleagues may bear me with on this point. You see, what is the law of enemy property? The enemy property law is actually, I'll read it from the preamble, an act to provide for the continued vesting of enemy property, vested in the custodian of enemy property for India under the Defense of India Rules 1962 and the Defense of India Rules 1971 and for the matters connected therewith. Now this is very important. Why I'm saying this, the entire enemy property act from my reading does not allow the custodian or the government of India to now prospectively attach properties and say it is enemy property. Please bear this in mind. It is only for the continued vesting of enemy property. So what was already? What was already vested, heard. please understand, vesting has to be by a procedure or a process of law, due process of law. It can't be simply I notify like section 4 notification and the land vests in the government. No, unless you have completed acquisition and taken possession, land does not vest in the government. So that way, unless you finish that process. Now, there is one thing very peculiar which I want to point out. When we speak of continued vesting of any pro enemy property in the custodian under the Defense of India rules 1962, I made a thorough search and I, it, that 1962 rules is pursuant to Defense of India Act 1962. Now this Defense of India Act 1962 was passed at the time when we were at war. Mm. And it was, it is also said, whereas the President has declared by proclamation under Clause 1 of Article 352 of the Constitution that a grave emergency exists whereby security of India is threatened by external aggression. So there was a proclamation issued. So it is in that background. But important thing is, it was 
assented on 12th of December. It was passed apparently on 12th of December and assented on 12th December 1962. Mm. You understand it? So now, the moment it comes, your minimum thing which you have to do is, you have to uh, bring about the notice to individual which is being affected. affected. If the notice is not given, your entire action is quashed and bad and set aside. There are several judgments which go on that aspect that the, uh, the attachment or the inclusion of the custodian's name mm. in the survey form 1 and 14 has been bad and it has been directed to be quashed and set aside. And I will also say that it is a Goa judgment, Shane Francisco yeah. Dias. In this matter, uh, the uh, final relief has been. Yeah, there are three, four of them. We declare the impugned order date made by the custodian as nullity and quash the same, and restore the names of the original owners. Yes. You understand? So this is what has happened. Now I want to tell you another thing. When I mentioned to you that this is only relating to property which vested in the custodian. custodian. Because if it was not vested, then there's no question of continuing under the Enemy Property mm. Act. This matter came up before the Kerala High Court in a matter of Joshi Thomas versus Union of India. It's a 2004 judgment of the Kerala High Court where they reiterated this position that it is, the question was whether the government of India can subsequently under this Enemy Property Act, whether they can uh, attach new properties they already had a list. Mm. They were trying to identify more properties and the High Court held no. The government of India, the custodian actually filed a review petition before the High Court. Mm. The review petition was dismissed uh, by an order of 2014. So uh, the law, as I mentioned to you, even the Supreme Court, when it considered certain matters, it uses the word properties which vested in the custodian. custodian as on that under those two enactments. So that is one thing which I think every individual who is affected or every lawyer who is going to fight this matter should keep this in mind because this will be according to me the one of the best ways by which you will be able to identify whether the due process was followed or not and then definitely you can get that order of your inclusion of the custodian's name in the survey record to be quashed. Uh, Dr. Uh, I would also want you to uh, give your opinion on, on the suggestion made by Advocate Radharao Gracious, where the peculiarity of Goa of, you know, <laughs> between 47 and 61, still being under the, uh, under, as a Portuguese territory, during which time there were people living in, in Karachi and working in Karachi, and then suddenly the 65 war comes and their properties in Goa. Uh, so I some sort of a, <coughs> uh, exclusion or a provision to exclude these properties. I will tell you one thing. He, uh, Advocate Radharao Gracia's uh, uh, contention is perfectly valid and I don't think that we may need to make a petition seeking it. Mm. The reason why is who is an enemy is itself by its definition here. Enemy or enemy subject or enemy firm means a person or country who or which was an enemy, an enemy subject, can you say that? Mm. Including his legal heir and successor, whether or not a citizen of India or the citizen of a country which is not an enemy or the enemy, enemy subject. They've defined, they've made an amendment and mass, they repeated words enemy subject or his legal heir and successor who has changed his nationality or an enemy firm including its succeeding firm whether or not partners or members of such succeeding firms are citizens of India or the citizens of a country which is not enemy or such firm which has changed its nationality as the case may be again under the Defense of India Act 1962 mm -hmm. and the Defense of India Rules 1962 or the Defense of India Act 1971 and the Defense of India Rules 97 but does not include a citizen of India other than those citizens of India being legal heir and successor of the enemy, enemy subject or enemy firm. So now what does it mean? If you have been a subject mm. of that enemy nation or now today admittedly China and Pakistan are not officially enemy nations. That's why they use the word had been an enemy nation. 
So, therefore, what happens is, if you can establish that I never changed my nationality despite having been in Pakistan, because Pakistan allowed people with Portuguese nationality to remain even post their uh, 1947. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I had seen the case, one of the cases was where a Goan who went from here continued with Portuguese citizenship and then went from there to New Zealand and then to Australia. Now, there are many people who acquired Pakistani nationality and migrated to Canada and other places. Mm -hmm. Those people having acquired Pakistani nationality would now be under this. Under this enemy. No, yes. but, uh, what, uh, yeah, what he says is correct. That as long as you are, you were a citizen at one time, mm. I think that would bring you within the bring you within the. But if you the, were not the citizen, if you are not a citizen, then, then the law does then not of apply. Course, yeah. not apply. I think if you if you are not a citizen, mm. then it is a case where you could go to the court and decide and demand that the, my rights to the property mm. as against the government's right to that property, property. be adjudicated. There are but, two things. But I think uh, Carlos, what you are saying on vesting. Uh, has been a subject matter of number of judgments of the Supreme Court where the, the court also held that the custodian had a right to maintain the property. But the 2017 amendment, according to me, has changed this position. Mm. 2017 amendment vests ownership in the custodian. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand seven. No, I, I'm not on that. Earlier, the vesting was only for management. Yes. Now it is on now, ownership. Now, by 2017, they have, they have taken over the ownership. Yes. Ownership. No, and one more that thing. That is different. They, I'm not they have, on that they have not of only it. taken over the ownership, mm. they have changed the earlier position. The earlier mm. one who was occupying yeah. could not be removed from the place. Mm. Now they have changed that also uh, under the Public Premises Act. Mm. Also has been amended. Now it can be forcibly removed from the place. Uh, not really, Dr. Uh, what they have said is for those properties that are uh, below 1 crore. No, no, no. See, the problem is it is under the rules. If it is below 1 crore, crore then you are given the first right. They have given the first right. Yes. That o means o you can o pay o that amount, amount and, and get out. Own. And own it. Own, own it. it. But if you are within 1 crore to 100 crores, then it is, then it is e auctioning. E auctioning. Yes. But what 1 crore, you are not getting it free. You have you to have pay, to that pay that amount. amount. You have to pay that so amount. you get the advantage of being an occupant. Yes, yes. <laughs> Vesting, what I was saying is, is not on the technical aspect to what extent it vests. Mm -hmm. What I meant in the vesting was, how did they acquire the right to it, Correct. whether to management or not, without giving a now, notice. Now they have finished that issue. No, no, no. Because they, now they have finished, and they say now it, the ownership is on in the custodian. No, no. You are talking of that other aspect. What is the extent of vesting? Yeah. Whether it's mere management or Earlier ownership. It was mere management. I'm not on that. I'm again repeating my vesting when I'm saying they claim to vest the property in the custodian has to be by due process. Huh. You understand? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. I'm not on you the final aspect of what that is, is the vesting. Yes, yes, yes. That's okay. That is right. That is right. Because yeah. now, see, earlier it was for the purpose of managing. Correct. Now they say the ownership, he's the owner. The government is the owner. So I can't understand why it should be enemy property. It should be government of Goa, government of India property. property. How can it be anyway property anymore? Once it is once owned, it is vested owned, in the, vested, in once the, it is owned by the government of India, it is no longer enemy property. It is their own property. But government is the enemy of the people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see what happens you now here, uh, 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 oh, Ashley. See what happens is uh, interpreting the law, discussing the law is what my colleagues are doing. Mm. I'm not much concerned with that. You have framed a law mm. which, to me. Is it's the a law. law which is doing injustice to us. Yes. That's why I am saying the government of India had, you see, when Nehru, when the liberation came, mm -hmm. we were told by Nehru as prime minister that all interests of Goans will be protected. Mm -hmm. Now, there were Goan communities all over the world. Over the world. Have you protected our interests? When you made this legislation, you knew very well that Goa was a different kettle, uh, pound of fish. Mm -hmm. We were not part of the British, see, India, the British. India was divided into India and Pakistan. Mm. Portuguese India was not part of Pakistan. that settlement. Yeah. That settlement. Yes. So when you took over Portuguese India, liberated or whatever you call, the government was bound to protect the interests of these people. Mm. Because you see Goans, as I have said, were all over the world. And unfortunately and sadly for the Goans, wherever we have been there, we have faced difficulties. difficulties. See, 1971, Goans were kicked out by Idi Amin. Mm. We lost all our lands, properties. In 1975, Hastings, Banda of Malawi kicked Goans out in 48 hours. Mm. 
because of some radio debate or whatever. So all these things happen. Now, but this happened in, in countries which are not our native places. Yes. You see, we are asked to make immigrants there. Mm. We were kicked out. Mm. So we didn't have that much of grievance in the sense we ourselves had come there and let us say usurped the, uh, the locals, jobs of the others. Uh, but here we are, India is our country, mm. Goa is our land, mm. and we are being deprived of our rights by our own people, by our own government. That is what is the difference. Duh. You see, when being denied by others is all right. In our, see, at that time, a lot of Goans came back here. Many Goans mm. came back to Goa yeah. from Kenya and all. They yeah. had a home to go to. Now, where do we go? You have taken over Goa and annexed it to India. People who are outside, you protect our interests. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Whether we are in Pakistan, we were pa not in Pakistan, out of choice of Pakistan. We were there because it was British See, India. See, that office was created in 1939. The, the yeah. custodian office is 1939. Yes. It was after the Second World War. It was for that for, for by the other countries. For the other countries. It was created by British for the other countries. That and it has continued. All our laws, all the sedition have, and all were laws of the old era. Have a Not colonial origin. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so everything is applicable origin. here. Colonial origin. Yes. Uh, so I will bring in uh, advocate Carlos here. Uh, on the point on the aspect of violation of private right to property. Can this matter be escalated to the international level? See, first thing is, you only have right to property is no longer a fundamental right. It is only a constitutional right. Law says no person shall be deprived of property save by authority of law. That is Article 300A. If you are a foreign citizen, there is no fundamental right, nor constitutional right to you. You understand? Yeah, no, no. If, if you're an Indian citizen yeah. and happen to be a heir to an enemy property. Yeah. See, when you are an heir, how did you acquire uh, Indian citizenship? I was born in, by naturalization. My father went to Pakistan. Yeah. So, so he didn't acquire po because you normally become no, a citizen. No, but this, 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 this debate is cut, is, is closed by the 2017 amendment. And now they say even a successor. Successor. So Indian succession law will not apply. Uh, the heirs will be covered. See, this Supreme Court has actually uh, ruled on this matter in the Rajas case. And the court said that it will not apply to successors. The court said these properties will now belong to the successor. So many palaces were ordered to be handed over to them. And the court has retrospectively taken no, the, no, but the can't, government. Can't the validity of the 2017 amendment be challenged? So, I, I, is it open to challenge? Uh, any law is open any to challenge. Any law is open uh, to you challenge. Can challenge, but uh, success is success. a question. <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, but your issue of taking it to the international court also may not uh, be where, where tested in our court. Where is the question? No, of because it has already court? been no, tested in correct. our court. That's why I said. Yeah, so there, where is the question of testing it? Has? It has to be tested in our courts. See, the jurisdiction of the international court in private property will not apply will to not India. Apply. We will not accept that jurisdiction. That could be international court dispute between two countries. 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 Individuals here, if there is a dispute, we are denied our rights or even allowed, that we can't take it outside the country. No? A final Supreme Court is the final authority. Mm -hmm. uh, so, those are the, what is the option for people to who, who are heirs to enemy property. Heirs <laughs> <laughs> have no option. No, no. Before. <laughs> no, no. I, no, think no, I, think I think one option is to say that uh, uh, the predecessor was never a Portuguese citizen. Never a, never a Pakistani citizen. citizen. That could be the only option at least now. That uh, they're calling upon the courts to adjudicate. See, up to in 2017, they have also taken away the power of the courts to adjudicate on this matter. Mm. So now it has to go to the High Court only. Mm. The High Court and Supreme Court mm. may decide on whether your predecessor was a foreign citizen or not. I mean, Pakistani citizen or not. But how have they decided that someone was a Pakistani? No, that's what I'm saying. That, that is what that Carlos's point comes into picture. You then. have to first establish the claim. Yes, obviously. As you correctly said, person might have been in Bombay, might have been in Calcutta or in any other place. Mm. There were Goans also who were musicians in the palaces of the mm. Maharajas mm. and they mm. remain mm. in Baroda mm. and many mm. other places. Mm. But doesn't mean they have gone to Pakistan mm. just because they are not here. You see, Carlos, there you, I'm sure you'll remember there was Khan Xavier Severin Rodriguez, Sarpanch of Kurtori for right. many years. Yeah. Doctor, I think. Right. Was very powerful man in those good old right. days. Yes. Now, his one set, son was settled in Karachi. One son. Now, his wife, 
felt that Pakistan was not good enough for them. This man was here, the family, the father was here, the son was there. And in 1971, they migrated to Canada. Mm -hmm. And somehow, one of the sons, his name is Carl Rodriguez, he set up something there. And he's there. in Canada, huh. a company called Soti, S-O-T-I. It is one, it was recently profiled in BBC. The company is now worth a billion dollars. And his mother, the boy's mother says, I mean, now they are feeling that they did the right thing to migrate from there. Mm. But they went because they felt that Pakistan wasn't good enough. But their house, everything is here, man, in Kurtori. Now, will he become, will he lose everything? Father was here, father was Sarpanch of Kurtori. Till uh, in the 1970s or so. He used to wa move around on no, the side. No, but uh, this is what, uh, see, I do not know how. So, he should would, he be, no, no, he was I, in Pakistan. See, see, see under the evacuation. He may not even care. Correct. But uh, as, a, as they are financially very sound. No, no, but see what happens, I think, under the Evacuee Property Act, there is a process of partitioning. There is also a process of partitioning. But that is not there. That is not any, here under the Enemy Property Act. Yeah. yeah. See, in, in the, in the Evacuee Property Act, you can... You can no, 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 but under Enemy Property Act, yeah. a property owned by five sons. Exactly. One, is, one correct, is abroad. Correct, correct. But so the whole property doesn't become... No, the whole property doesn't become. become. That, uh, it cannot become. It cannot become. Yes. yes. That's, so that... That, we that have is the again. point. So no, no, <laughs> that is what the citizens must fight out. Fight, what fight happened? out, fight out. If Correct. one person was here, who was, and two brothers were out in Pakistan or wherever, the property can't become, Correct. because Correct. our law Correct. is, one can no. take uh, look up that the property for all. And, and you know, forum is the High Court or Supreme Court now. High Court or Supreme Court? Yes, because the courts are barred. Now, under judicial review, High Court and Supreme Court power can never be taken away. Taken away. It is only because of that that the courts will have jurisdiction. The civil courts, no, out. Because for a long time, the high courts and supreme courts were saying, go to the civil court and get your matter decided. Let the civil court decide your matter. This was the issue which so many judgments but are under there. section 18, first you can approach the central government. When the central government passes an order, you challenge before the high court. high court. And then you can go to supreme court. But I still say, why do you have to go to the uh, government and prove the negative? It is for them to prove. No. On what basis and on what material Ent you made this entry. entry? And this is exactly in the Shane's matter, which I just pointed mm -hmm. out. The High Court asked them, on what basis did you make this? And what is the evidence you have got? What record? Simply ask somebody along the in the neighborhood uh, uh, the statements. Mm -hmm. It could not have been because somebody behind your back can't say he's called to Pakistan, so that either he grabs your property or he allows your property to go to some to the government of India. You understand? Yeah. Well, no, but what happens, you know, Carlos, see the whole uh, e e problem here is the properties were sort of abandoned or semi-abandoned. Exactly. Now, g this Iwaki Property Act in particular was there to protect your properties in your absence. Wait a minute. Now, that, that was the same thing as enemy property. It was there to protect and manage your property. Correct, but now, so they say it vests in the government. It is ownership is with the government now. That, that is no, no, I understand. I taken understand. Over. Taken over. The government takes over in 2017. But how does government become owner? What is that? By, law, by, law, by, law, by law, No, no, but compensation will have to be paid. China, no. China, China, China. no, no, I know the law doesn't provide for it. I know yeah. the law doesn't provide. But can you just take away like that? That's what I'm then saying. That's <laughs> the point I was making. Is it a violation of your private rights? Your right to the property. Property, that, that is what I'm saying. But, but the whole problem is property is taken away of the enemy. See, the whole difficult life, so it is up to you to show that this is my property, I am not an enemy. No, not I'm only a... that, if people living in Goa, how can they be enemies? Man? People continue to live in the land. Correct, right? correct. So are they enemies? But you are you having enemies to live So here? says the 2017 amendment. No, no. That even the hairs are enemies, but I Yeah, think. even the hairs are enemies. No, but we are Indian citizens. Even, even, even if you are an Indian citizen. citizen. No, they see, may say, uh, they may see, say whatever, see, parliament your, may say anything. And see, your entire argument was accepted by the Supreme Court in the Raja's case. Full. What you are saying was, and the whole thing has been undone. In I know, country. but can they undo it? I mean, just because you, you particular, see what is happening here, we can see through it. We can see through it that most of the so-called enemy properties are owned by Muslims, Muslims in India. Muslims. And in Goa, it is Christians. Christian. And the BJP is out to teach them a lesson. This much is there. But can the law tolerate it? Will the courts accept that you take some communities and deprive them of their land without compensation? See. This issue also came up number of times, but what happened is uh, Meghalaya, Assam, and West Bengal has properties because of Chinese. They went to China, so this issue of yours has, was not acceptable to the courts. 
that it is of these communities that community because they said the, no no i am not saying law, law i am not saying no. i am not saying these communities not i am but see we can see what is the motive behind that that may you may not argue in a court that this is done because no, you can no, argue no, actually argued you can no, still argued. you can still argue but the court as we know are not willing to accept it on the face while well, they will ask so many other questions which you can't prove yeah because of china in particular it could not be proved otherwise see, they were all almost all were muslim but brothers. rather i think that your suggestion can, is acceptable and arguable and i'll tell you from what point of view article 300a says no person it doesn't say no citizen. No citizen, yes. No person shall be deprived, deprived of property, saved by authority of, of law. So one is the law which provides for requisition, and the other is providing for compensation. Whether it's just or reasonable, that's a different part. But it there will be a law for acquisition, and there has to be a provision for compensation. When they acquire, when they sell it off, yeah. certain percentage must come to the owner. No, how it should be is a different matter. Yeah. So because you see, it may be relatable to the date on which they take over. They may sell it 20 years later. You understand? So you should get compensation of the date you're deprived of your property. property. No, but then again the problem would arise. Enemy property means money also according to that act. So you are going to pay money into the enemy when that itself is... See the way it is. See the, whole, the no, deprivation no, no. of your no, no. In at money that, at that itself time, will be quashed. The law came. I mean, the the I, philosophy behind the law is these properties should not be used against, against the, the enemy, country, against yes. the nation, against, against the, the nation. Yeah. That, that that this should not be used against the nation. Yeah. Because with that, even even the 1939 British law was that that the in British properties. I mean, the enemy property should not be used against the British. For that, they said they it was in the. In the government, in the government. See, they had similar law in USA where they took all the Japanese and put them in camps. You know, mm. all the Jap American citizens of Japanese origins were all put together in camps, and they are being compensated now later by the American government, saying it was unjust. Same thing happened in India in 1962. There was a strong Chinese community in Calcutta. They were all sent to Rajasthan and put in camps in Rajasthan after the 1962 war. Mm. What happened thereafter, I do not know. I didn't follow it up. But positively, I remember reading that the Chinese in Calcutta were shifted to camps in Rajasthan. Mm. Obviously, at that point of time, uh, it was a proper thing to do because finally, China had attacked India and you didn't know whether these were friends or enemies. So all dumped as enemies. But in the case of Goa, there was no such question at all, man. Our people have peacefully gone. They are working. You give them a chance to reclaim. That's all that I'm saying. We are not enemies, we have not fought. On the contrary, <coughs> it is the Goan who has fought for the Indian Army. 90% of Goans in the Indian Army are Catholics men. The record is there. So we are not enemies men, we are patriots. We have fought for the country. We have had a major general, uh, of, uh, in, uh, commander of our army, uh, uh, Goan. So many officers were there. Carlos's father-in-law is there, <laughs> <laughs> Brigadier Andy Costa. I mean, so many Goans are patriots. We've suffered for our country. We fought, and you call us, uh, you take away our land because they happen to be there, because we have traveled all over the world for work. So I think this should be taken up politically that in Go with Goans, you make an exception. Uh, one concluding uh, remark uh, uh, for uh, every member of the panel, for Dr. Carlos. Uh, from the point of view of people who have interest in enemy properties what what would be your advice opinion? first thing i said that establish if uh, find out on the manner in which that mutation was carried out in the survey if it has been done without issuing proper notice mutation in favor of the custodian, custodian. because suddenly you find the custodian's name name mentioned. in the yeah so f get the record from there find out how it was done whether notice was ever it ever even issued and addressed and sent to any family member mm. uh, who family members it can't be uh, like you know cousins first cousin second it has to be sent to the person who's the owner of the property where it was sent and uh, whether it was pasted whether it was notified in the village wherever and then uh, in uh, objections invited and then due process was followed this is the first thing mm. second assuming it was done and it came unserved whether publication was done mm. third is Assuming that this family was in one of these previous enemy territories, mm -hmm. Pakistan or China, then if we have that 
uh, as uh, Radha pointed out, Portuguese nationality, mm -hmm. then I think that plea can be taken to show that we were not, uh, they were not uh, citizens of Pakistan mm -hmm. or China mm -hmm. or wherever, and uh, that they were not enemy subject. Mm -hmm. But I would still say, we, this is going in the reverse way. This is where you have to prove all the mm -hmm. negative. I would say that it would be safer, as has been done in many cases, directly after you got that the notices were not served properly, mm. I would suggest go to the High Court, mm. challenge this inclusion of the name, High Court will give you that uh, hearing and will allow your petition if there was no proper due process of law followed. Mm. And what High Court may at the most say, keeping it open to the custodian to conduct necessary inquiry, mm. you understand? Mm. Now on that question, I am repeating. As I have already pointed out, can the uh, custodian conduct an inquiry now? The property should have vested then. Mm. Because if the vesting is only to take vested place. Vested in 2017. No, no. should have vested in, in 1962. 68. 62. When the, but the act came in 68. 68. It is for continued vesting of enemy property. property. Vested in the custodian of enemy property of India. See, the vesting, I'm not going on that mm, word, mm, to what extent. Mm, mm. But there should have been some vesting. Some. Under the Defense of India Rules 1962 and the Defense of India Rules 1971. You understand that? Yeah. So if that process was not, if this goes, there's no new vesting which can take place. Take place. So I think you can directly liberate yourself from this uh, kind of attention which may be. So necessary. option is the courts. No, no, option high is, the, is, is high the high court, court only, the high there court is no only. other option and the, our high court has given relief to number of people who have gone to the courts. Yeah. Because, and see, because what happens is, uh, the only thing they do is put their name in the form 1 and put in. Are but the, what would be the cause of action to go to court? You find your no, record, no. your senior record, that's mm. your cause of action. No, no, and, it, and if, if, if the custodian has, custodian's name is there and the custodian has never interfered with your Ownership, ownership with the ownership or possession mm -hmm. now that he is trying to interfere with the ownership that is your cause, that of, is cause of it including this latest notification which has come out see what happens is you know the land revenue code has a procedure is a procedure by itself Self. for and one this uh, survey records are maintained created and maintained by the by the under the land revenue code mm -hmm. by the authorized officers mm -hmm. deputy collectors mm -hmm. and so on now any change is there after survey was promulgated has to be done as the procedure provided, provided mutation, mutations and all that. Yeah. Now I do not, I mean I am hearing for the first time now that the custodian has entered his name. Now if it was entered at that point of time in 1971-72 when survey, was, survey was done, that's all right. But subsequent changes brought, they cannot stand they the test of They are just writing law. letters. To include the name and yes, the mamla that's all. That's all. It, that is the, the, oh, the, 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 the so that process can be that is that process can be challenged. That will have to be challenged. Yeah, but besides, I don't see how the custodian can hold an inquiry because if it is a matter of under the land revenue code inclusion exclusion name, the no, the, the, the no, law, no, no, gives, law gives custodian that power. The custodian has been given, conferred with powers oh, of a civil yeah. court to conduct an inquiry yes, yes, yes. because he must first ascertain. No, no, he can hold an inquiry but not on land revenue court. No, no, He no. can then direct the That's what he does. Exactly. Correct. That's, That's what, what he does. does. He ah. writes a letter to the mamladar or to the deputy collector. But without holding inquiry. Yes, without holding inquiry. No, he says he has hold, held an inquiry. He, he says he has held he an inquiry. that your, your princess was, was a uh, uh, Pakistani national. But how inquiry was so He has conducted inquiry and he tells the mamladar, mamladar includes this the ma name. This inquiry is what like we have seen in the Shane's matter, some field inquiry. Yes, yes. Which yes. no notice is given to you. Not uh, inquiry your contemplated back. under our law. Correct. See, and keep, and these all these judgments which Carlos is talking about are recent. Ah. After the 2017 amendment. See, up to 2017, nobody bothered about this enemy problem. No one was even aware. Yes. Of it. Was, uh, it was this is all recent. Even here, 2023 judgment is. Yes. There. I see. Yeah. What is the, the difficulty here is yeah. everybody has to move the high court. Yes. And then you know the f high court fees are very high, no? <laughs> Trial court, say, ordinary people. To move the high court, you have to deposit few lakhs, man. I think the Goa government should make a provision to bear the expenses. <laughs> <laughs>
earlier it was easy you could go to the district court against the yeah but against uh, the custodian but now, now that they have barred the uh, completely uh, civil courts uh, thank you uh, dr radhar gracious advocate uh, cleofat and uh, advocate carlos alvarez for your enlightened uh, discussion and uh, suggestion i hope uh, those who are owning enemy properties in goa there are 295 of them from the latest uh, figures we have got from the center uh, have learned from this discussion that the doors of the high court are open thank you <laughs>